What's up, everybody? This is DDP back with another... I thought about doing a live stream, but I ultimately decided against it. Uh, I wanted to just kind of stay more on point with my thought process. So I felt like this was a better way to kind of do it. Obviously, some big news came down regarding not just the NBA, not just you know the National Hockey League, not just Major League Baseball, not just March Madness, the men's and women's basketball tournaments uh, for college basketball. It's just, it. there's a huge thing, obviously. And it's not like it's news. Everyone is aware of it, obviously, at this point. If you follow this channel, this is a pretty much solely sports channel and based around Dallas sports. And as of the end of the Mavericks game last night, we don't know when the next NBA game will be played. And so that's kind of left things in a weird place. So the NBA had a game that was taking place or getting ready to take place between the Utah Jazz versus the Oklahoma City Thunder in OKC. And there was a big delay before the game because they basically realized that Gobert, they weren't going to play him. He wanted to play. He felt physically good enough to play. But they basically looked at everything and decided... Let's just be extra care careful here. They tested him for coronavirus, and he tested positive. Now, unfortunately, Gobert, just a couple days earlier, had made light of coronavirus and how you know everyone was freaked out about it and how you couldn't get sick from touching the surface of things. So he was at the press conference touching all the mics and the recorders, and after the press conference, apparently was continuing that kind of joking behavior in the locker room touching teammates, touching their personal belongings. And now as a result, Donovan Mitchell also has coronavirus. And it sounds like there might be maybe one more. I, I remember hearing Moutier, Emmanuel Moutier was also said to have it, but I've seen other things countering that claim. So I don't know, but this got very real very fast, literally within the span of 24 hours. It started getting real the start of this week. And then in the last 24 hours, it's now gotten crazy because once you started hearing initially, hey, the NCAA basketball tournament will have no fans in attendance, and then you started hearing all of these conference championship tournaments were being canceled, and then the NBA news came down with the Oklahoma City situation. They had to quarantine and test all of the Jazz players and the people around them. It's 58 tests that they ran, and only the two came up positive is my understanding, Thunder players were exposed to them too. And you got to wonder in those cases who else might have been exposed to this because there's an incubation period involved. And I'm not going to try and make this whole video like I'm talking scientifically about all this. There's a lot that I'm still learning as we go. But there's an incubation period that reportedly goes anywhere from four days to two weeks. And you're infectious the entire time despite showing no symptoms. Gobert went around, he played several games. Uh, the team flight for the Jazz was actually used by other teams after Gobert used it, and that includes the Memphis Grizzlies, who came to Dallas Friday. So then if a Grizzlies player has it, you had interaction between Mavericks players and them, them in the city of Dallas. Like This can spread exponentially, and I really don't want to get into politics and all of this. All I'm going to say is that I don't care if you affiliate with an R in front of your name or a D. Either way, both parties have left the working class, middle class behind. There was no safety net for this. There were no plans or procedures in place to help us. I mean, we know what the healthcare system is and how that situation looks. We don't have any kind of universal system. And so a lot of people are going to, even people who get sick from this, and I understand the mortality rate is around 3.5% right now is the understanding of it, which sounds perhaps low, but you got to keep in mind the deadliest pandemic in human history was the Spanish flu in 1918. Granted, modern medicine is drastically different now. I'm just saying that had a mortality rate of about 1.75%, I think I read, and that killed 50 million people worldwide. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Like, in that particular case, you had... The average life expectancy in 1917 was, what was it, 51? And then after the start of the plague and how that, not plague, but the start of the Spanish flu and how that went through, uh, it cut it all the way down to 39. Now, it bounced back after it passed, but 
it it reduced it that drastically. And in that particular case, it targeted people that were more. Uh, it affected, I should say, people who were more in the prime of their life, 20s, 30s, 40s, because I guess the belief is that it had something to do with a particular strain that older generations had in some form or another encountered earlier in their life, and therefore at least had a resistance, if not a full-blown immunity to it, that younger people didn't have. This particular case, the old are much more susceptible to it because they have weaker immune you know, compromised systems and all of that. And it doesn't look like it's affecting kids, which is really good news, at least not in like high rates. Obviously, there are cases of children. There's a little girl in Frisco, three years old, I believe they said has it uh, as well, both of her parents. So it's a serious thing. And it's basically shutting down everything. All the sports world is going to come to a grinding halt. And you just have to keep in mind, it's with the way things are, you have a lot of people who are living paycheck to paycheck in this country. You have like 70% of the country who can't even afford a $400 emergency bill. We don't have a single payer healthcare system. We have, you know, tens of millions of people either underinsured or just uninsured altogether who don't have full coverage or no coverage. That's what that means. And that's what we're facing. And that's why we are so humiliatingly in embarrassingly unprepared for something like this and so what can we do well you see all these leagues all these tournaments and everything shutting down everywhere everything is on hiatus the sports world as a whole will come to a complete stop effective basically immediately and we don't know when we'll get nba back we don't know now mark cuban has stepped up and on the night that all this came down was very quick to say, you know, for the people who work hourly here at the double AC and who depend on these games, we're going to step up and we're going to put some programs together for them to help them get by because financially this is going to cripple a lot of people. You can't just look at it in terms of like, Oh, well the mortality rate isn't that drastic. Well, the rate of infection and how fast it's spreading. We don't even have, ample tests right now i know i said earlier the jazz uh and players and staff and all that they had 58 tests rare occurrences man rare occurrences like we have a thousand confirmed cases or something like 1100 maybe it's because we're not testing hardly anyone and because of the incubation period we have no idea how far this stuff has already spread it's very real possibility it's you know i said frisco that's not far from where i am at all It could be literally people I work with. I have no idea. And I'm not jumping on here to try and like sound the alarm or anything like that because I'm not the guy to do that. But I do know that there are certain steps and responsibilities that you have to take. And that's what I and my family are are going to try and do. We don't know the extent of things. The CDC conducted yesterday 77 tests across the country. 77 You got 1,100 people you know are infected. God knows how many more. And we're operating that slowly. And it's because we're trying to figure out, are we going to make people pay for the testing? Are we going to make people pay for the actual, you know, whatever vaccine or whatever treatment they need? That's what's going to cripple this whole thing. That's what's going to devastate people is you have people who can't afford it. I said earlier, they can't afford a $400 emergency thing. The early rough estimates for this between testing and treatment was over $1,300. In some cases, it's drastically higher. It just depends. Like that's the baseline you're looking at. And so you're going to have basically a situation where a lot of people who need help, who are sick, aren't going to get it. And because they live... Paycheck to paycheck, they can't afford to miss work. They, they can't afford to take time off because we don't have paid time leave either. And so they're going to be out there exposing themselves and others. And it's going to allow this thing to get really, really out of hand. In the case of individuals, what can you do? You know, you can wash your hands a lot. 20 seconds when you wash your hands, sing happy birthday twice, whatever method you want to use. You should use hand sanitizer regularly. Wipe down any doors, any anything. If you have a question about any surface 
in your house, light switches, doorknobs, my case, a microphone, whatever. If you have any questions about anything, try and wipe it down, disinfect it, do what you can. Beyond that, it's largely just social distancing. Now, I'm fortunate enough that my wife a few days earlier, something something tweaked uh, her her consciousness about this, where she looked at it and she was more concerned than I was. I thought, you know, I've lived through bird flu. I've lived through swine flu, SARS, you know, just in my lifetime, I've seen all these things and they've never really impacted my life. And so it was easy to kind of think, ah, this won't really affect us. Or maybe I'll know someone who has it, like extended person I know, not really an actual acquaintance or something, but it probably won't change life that drastically. The world will keep turning. And now in large part, it doesn't feel like it is. Things are changing. So I'm fortunate. She went out and she got a bunch of food supplies, disinfectant wipes, you know, toilet paper, bottled water, all that stuff. Now, didn't hoard it to like a psycho uh, extent where it's like a doomsday prepper, but took really good precautions. And last night at dinner, when that news came down during the Mavericks game, yesterday was my wife and I's four-year wedding anniversary. We were out at our favorite restaurant, and they had a TV on in the bar that had the Mavs game on. I wasn't really paying attention to it, but I did see when Mark Cuban was on screen um, talking to them, and I was like, that's weird. For some reason, it caught my it caught my eye as like, this is something different. And I glanced at my phone, and I saw all of my phone being blown up as far as people talking about this. And I realized, okay, this is, this is officially serious. This is very, very much everyday life altering stuff at this point. And so this morning I went and I got some more stuff, uh, before I even briefly made an appearance at work, I went and I got more stuff and, you know, just some basic stuff we need around the house just to try and take care of it before it gets out of control. And it's gotten worse as the day has gone on. Now you got, you know, Costco's and Walmart's and all these other big uh, warehouse type buy in bulk kind of places being swarmed basically by scared people. And you have certain places in different parts of the world where you'll have people fighting over a pack of toilet paper or something. You don't have to go to that extent necessarily, but there is going to be a shortage in that regard because people are scared and they don't know what to do. They're trying to hoard to do what I referenced earlier and what I'm basically largely going to partake myself, social distancing. What that is is basically like almost self-quarantining yourself. As much as you can, take yourself out of the equation. And if enough people do that, you limit the rate of spread. Now, if you get sick, obviously you have to take measures. You can't just stay in there. You have to get treatment and then you know ride out the rest of it quarantine but you have to call your doctor office first you have to go through measures like that don't just show up around other people who might who might be trying to get tested but don't necessarily have it because then if you do have it then you're just infecting them it's it's a crazy crazy thing to consider but that's what you have to do so i'm my my work has enough flexibility in its schedule that i can i can work from home i have a work laptop i can work from home so i popped into the office this morning I grabbed my laptop and anything I needed, and I came right back home, wiped all that shit down in hand sanitizer and uh, Lysol spray and any anything else I could think of uh, to try and you know make sure it was clean, make sure it was safe. And I think I'm largely, I don't know how long I'm going to be working from home. I don't know how long I'm going to be just here. I don't know how long this thing's going to last. It might be a few weeks you know, a couple weeks, maybe might be two, might be four. I don't know. I think sports and sporting events are going to be shut down for at least four to six weeks. So we'll see when that stuff comes back. But I really think this is something that cannot be taken lightly. The go bear situation just proves that it cannot be taken lightly. You say what you want about the mortality rate, but the, with the rate of infection, you could still be talking according to CDC about up to a million people in the U.S. alone dying. And it's going to be the oldest, most vulnerable and immune-compromised people among us who die. There's no reason to just accept that. There's no reason to brush that off and be like, bah, who do, what do I care? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go about my day. I, I'll, get, I'll get better. Most people get better. Okay? 
But is that really fair for you to then go out and get someone else sick who can't get better? There's, you'll still have young people who do die, people in the prime of their life, 20, 30 like I am. You'll still have those people who can die from this. This is not, this is not a, a matter to be taken lightly. And I really, I'm frustrated with how many people are treating it like it's a joke because what's the worst thing that happens if it's not serious? Like in this case, oh, well, economy grinds to a halt. Dude, the economy is already tanking. The U.S. economy, they had to pump $500 billion into it earlier today to give it about 20 minutes of avoiding a nosedive and then pumped another trillion dollars into it. So now it's $1.5 trillion they spent today propping up the economy to try and hold that up. That's just all money going into you know, them trying to address the Dow. It's basically propping that up as best they can. And in the meantime, we got we to gotta take care of the people. We can't just focus solely on the economy and focus on like Wall Street in this case. But... I don't know, man. They they have to do something because this is, the, I think I saw, in terms of the percentage drop for a single day in the Dow, it was like the fourth worst day in stock market history, U.S. stock market history. And at that point, you are talking Great Depression type numbers. So it's striking where we are and how vulnerable we are and how ill-equipped we are to deal with this. And this is the ultimate reality check. And frankly, for a lot of people, it should be a humbling experience because you point to if you disagree with it being a big deal and you think that we're driving panic here, we're taking care and trying to be responsible in this case. We're trying to limit the spread so that we have a, more time, if it's going to spread anyway, at least limit the rate of it, slow the rate of it. And B, you just got to, you have to take some responsibility for it. You know, some places, some people, I understand, I have the ability that I can work from home. And that is a privilege that I'm able to enjoy, you know, that my work offers me, affords me. A lot of people don't have that. Some of you guys talked in the community section when I initially posted about this saying, you know, that you work at a restaurant or you work somewhere else where it's hourly and this is monumentally impactful. You can't afford not to do something. The government has to step in at some point. Again, regardless of whatever your politics are, we're going to have to take care of the most vulnerable among us or else we're going to risk the entire house of cards collapsing. That's the point we're at. We're going to have to do something. I don't know if that's, you know, freezing debt payments I don't know if that's, you know, it looks like they're going to try and basically, you know, the testing will be free. Woohoo. That's a big step in the right direction. I mean, it's better than nothing, obviously, but okay, let's say the testing's free. If the payments, if the treatment is still over $1,000, you're not getting people out of the problem. You're just eliminating some of them from it, like from the overall total you could be facing. It's a baby step that only does a little bit of what you need. You basically have to cover the cost of treatment. And you, that's what you have to do. You have to find a way to, for lack of a better term, basically treat this like socialized medicine in this case. Have to give us some kind of more or less a Medicare for all type thing. Even if it doesn't go all the way, that feels like what has to happen because the fact that you have all these for-profit healthcare insurance companies trying to drag their feet and they're talking with like the CDC and they're talking in front of, you know, Congress and things like that. And they're talking about profit margins and things like that is insane. We don't have time for that kind of thing. We don't have time for that kind of talk. We have to address the problem. Italy is completely shut down. Last I read, their transportation still going the pharmacies are still going, and the grocery stores. All commercial activity is shut down. Oh, but Italy has universal health care, so how is that better? They're getting a handle on it. They're treating it seriously and to the utmost extent. We can't afford to be reckless. We can't. So I don't, I don't know what's going to happen with this, guys. I know I've already gone more into the weeds of it, and I'm sure... 
some of the stuff here that I've talked about that I've read, I don't know. It might not be all entirely accurate if it is. And, you know, feel free to fact check me. I don't, I, I encourage it. All I'm trying to talk about is how this is going to impact a lot of lives. Everything is going to grind to a halt. If I'm locked in the house for the next however many weeks, I'm probably going to, you know, I still have to work. My classes are going to move online. The, the campus is shut down. I can't go to school, but I can commit or continue my classes online. So that's something. It's going to allow me to, you know, continue on with my education for now, but I can't go to, I can't go to class and I have a couple classes in person. So with that being the case, all these schools are shut down. A lot of businesses are probably going to shut down and it's going to be a rude awakening. And if I'm here and if I can do more content with no sports, I don't know what I can talk about. I can do videos like this, like just a vlog kind of thing where I'm just talking about things in general, but I don't think that's what you want. I don't really feel like that's what I want to do either. I could encourage you to cheap pop, uh, cross post some of my stuff from that and just say, you know what, if I'm basically just driven into watch movie mode or game mode that I can just do reviews and talk about that stuff because I'm here and I can run my show out of my home and do all this that I need to. I don't know. <laughs> if you have an idea on what you want me to do, feel free. Chime in below. But right now, the only things I know of that I cover on the channel that aren't yet canceled are the XFL season, or I say canceled, suspended at least. The XFL season and WrestleMania, both owned by Vince McMahon, who is dragging his absolute feet to let either of those be shut down. Now, the city of Tampa Bay might not give him a choice on WrestleMania, but we'll see. So, this isn't uh, this isn't a joke. This isn't something to be taken lightly, and we're going to have to figure out something. But in the meantime, life is not going to be its usual self, and I don't know all of the impact for how that's going to affect my household, my channel. You know, I've got a six-month pregnant wife. And an unborn child to think about. And that's why I am taking these drastic measures. That's why I'm trying to social distance myself from everybody. Everybody. My wife is the only person here. Because if one of us were to test positive, it's not like, it, let's say hypothetically I tested positive. I couldn't, I couldn't quarantine separate from her. They would keep me with her. And that would terrify me because that all but guarantees her and my unborn child contracting the virus as well. Like that is horrifying to me. There's so many things that this complicates. Uh, my father has two major surgeries next week that are scheduled. These are already like life-threatening surgeries. Scheduled Monday and Wednesday, respectively. And do I go into, you know, do I go to the hospital to, you know, be there and support him as I plan to? It's going into a hospital, which is a hotbed, obviously, for things like this. You know, my sister-in-law, my wife's sister, she's a nurse. Her brother works at a hospital as well. Like, these are these are real issues to deal with. My dog, Red, had that major hip surgery I talked about. He's doing better. He's working his way back, but he needs physical therapy. And it's not physical therapy we can provide here. It's like a water treadmill that he needs to get him to strengthen the leg and actually use it better because he's still not all the way there where he needs to be. So, okay, do I take my dog and go out and hope this business stays open and that I can give him the treatment he needs or do I just don't do it and then that leg cont continues to wither until he basically has a, an, an unusable leg, you know? I, I don't know. There's a lot of things this complicates and there's a lot of reasons this is a scary reality, but I'll keep you posted. I'm not going to ramble any longer about it. Just know... I'm here. I'm going to try and remain active, but in what capacity yet? I don't know. I don't know. Be safe, guys. That's the that's the main thing. Be safe. Until next time, I don't even want to do my tagline. Peace.